Do you want me up there or does it matter? Anywhere you're comfortable, right, you can okay. walk around. We don't care. Okay, good. We are very awesome. casual here. Okay. Well, thank you for having me tonight. Is everybody okay with my voice about this loud? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Uh, my name is Lori Cisneros. I am running for Kern County Board of Education, trustee area seven. Area seven includes Tehachapi, Ridgecrest, Rosamond, California City, Boron. Um, ooh, I can tell you all of them actually. <laughs> uh, Fraser Park, Inyo Kern, Pine Mountain Club, Lebec, Caliente, North Edwards, and Keene. So it's, it's a big area. Kern County Board of Education is the umbrella district over all of the Kern County districts. So for instance, in Ridgecrest, what is your district? Is it Ridgecrest Union District here? Uh, Sierra, Sierra, Sierra Sand, that's right, Sierra Sand. Um, and then there's Rosamond Union, and then there's uh, like uh, Tehachapi Unified. So basically all those other districts are under the umbrella of Kern County Board of Education. So I am not a politician, I'll start by saying that. I am a wife, a mother, an educator of 20 plus years, and I am an advocate for parents. So um, in my experience in the classroom over the 20 years, I was in the public school system, in the private and the charter school system, and I saw things begin to change in the school system. And so I know firsthand what's happening and what's being taught and what's coming. And um, with that, I had it in my heart to, actually I'm, I'm not in the classroom any, anymore because I decided in my heart, I was convicted in my heart about the mandates. And so for me personally, this is a, a religious reason for me, um, I chose not to do the vaccine and I chose not to do the testing. So uh, in that process, because I'm an American citizen, I have that right under the Civil Rights Act, Title VII, I invoked my religious exemption, went through the process of the interactive process um, to come up with a reasonable accommodation. I was immediately put on unpaid leave in October of 2021. And so from that point, I hired an attorney with money I didn't have, you know, trying to fight for my rights and my job. And long story short, they ended up firing me. So I am now regrouping and I have uh, started my own little business at my farm. I'm a farmer in Tehachapi, California. I teach kids all ages, even I have some mommy and me classes and I go all the way through 12th grade. I teach about horses and goats and chickens. I have a garden. I have a little camping stove out there. We do farm to fork cooking and I have a hayride. I teach the big kids how to drive a tractor. So I, I feel like I've, I've landed my dream job actually after something so tragic for me. So, um, and the thing is, I'm taking that passion that that I had in trying to fight for my American rights in my own uh, career, I'm gonna take that and now transfer it to the children because I, I feel like I'm the perfect per person for the job because I have firsthand experience in the classroom and I'm now freed up to be able to run for board. So my heart is for the kids. I love kids and I love teaching and I love pouring into them and uh, I feel like this is a great way for me to do my part in what's happening in the system right now. And um, so that's where my heart is at with that. Currently on the board of education there in Kern County, there's the board members are seniors, nothing against seniors, <laughs> uh, but they're a little out of touch with what's really happening in the classroom. So I've, ever since I was put on unpaid leave in October of 2021, I went to every single board meeting every month for the entire almost a year now and I've seen the things that this board votes on and no parents are there to ask questions or say you know what, what about this or what about that or how does this affect the kids they have they're not there and so what I'm noticing on this board and my opponent um, he was appointed, he was not elected. So the person before him moved and then uh, Mary Barlow is the superintendent of schools there. She got together a team of people to scout out someone and they chose, uh, they chose him to take that spot. And so 
he's just a yes sir, yes ma'am kind of guy. Uh, nothing personally against him, but I feel like I didn't get the vibe like he was really there for the kids. Once I'm on the board, I will stop and ask questions like, where does that money come from and how does that affect the kids and what does this really mean? This kind of curriculum sounds great, but what's really being taught? You know, that's where my heart is with it. Um, I did witness them voting on a curriculum that incorporated the critical race theory. And if you're not familiar with that, the way that's presented from the publisher is that it's a celebration of our cultures. It's a celebration of ethnicity, of really what makes up America. And that part sounds great, right? I mean, that's who wouldn't want to celebrate that? We have a lot of different cultures in this very room um, and backgrounds and nationalities. And so, but what they don't talk about is what's really hidden inside there. And since I've been in the classroom, I have firsthand experience with seeing some of this stuff pop up. Critical race theory is also, uh, there's an agenda behind it to bring in um, LGBTQ, which is, um, and then gender discussions. So there's a lot of uh, liberal mindsets that are being infiltrated into this curriculum. This is an example, I brought a couple, I'll pass around when I'm finished speaking, but this is called California Studies Weekly. It is called a social studies curriculum. A lot of times in the elementary school ages, they talk about heroes. And this is second grade. They're talking about people making a difference. So this is for California history, basically. And this particular article is about Sally Ride. And we know Sally Ride as being the first American astronaut into space. That's an awesome thing. She was brilliant. She was a brilliant scientist. Um, had graduated with all kinds of honors. But I have highlighted, I know you can't see it right now, but it says that she is the first female and the first lesbian American astronaut. So this is second grade. These children are about seven years old. So it's, you know, the teacher says the word lesbian, you know there's gonna be a kid that hasn't heard that word before that says, teacher, what's lesbian? Now the, the subject has switched. Now they're talking about what lesbian means. How do you explain that to a, a seven-year-old? So that's just one live example in um, the curriculum that's being used in the public school system. This is another example, same curriculum, California Studies Weekly. This is fourth grade, and there's a whole article about equal rights for LGBTQ plus community. So fourth grade, they're talking about how their rights you know, compared to American rights and so I just wanted you to see these real life examples because I'm a teacher, I saw this, and um, this is happening in the classroom. So, and you asked me a question at the beginning to explain what the role of the trustees are on the board. So the role of the trustees, there's seven of us on a board. Each person represents an area. Um, most of the people on the board represent areas in Bakersfield or Shafter or Delano. They have those other communities. The one I'm running for is the biggest, like I shared earlier. So basically, we're there to represent the people in the area, especially parents that have children in the school system. But everyone, I mean, I'm sure all of you know someone that's in the school system, whether it's a grandchild or a neighbor or friend. Um, so. The trustee has the, the power to make decisions on curriculum, on how funds are being spent, on things like uh, special ed and how we can improve special ed services to our students, and um, uh, staff hiring and firing and uh, mandates that come down the pipe from Newsom, and how each district or each school will run out those or um, lay out those mandates with their own schools or districts so those are examples of some of the things some of the powers that the trustee board has it's it's pretty big in my opinion because especially the Kern County Board of Education because when we get when we make those decisions our decisions influence the other districts that are in the area so um, so that's where my heart's at with the kids. I feel like somebody's gotta do something. It's just 
this is just the beginning. And um, I know, I see people even nodding in this room. I've talked to a lot, a lot, a lot of parents. And almost, I would say 99% of them are understanding where I'm coming from and very supportive of what I'm trying to do as far as stopping uh, this infiltration and the, the indoctrination that's happening in the classroom. And so um, I think we need to get back to the fundamentals of education, language arts, math, science, social studies, social studies being the actual history of our country and our state. And so I'm, I'm the change that you guys need for our school system. And um, my name is Lori Cisneros. I'm running for Kern County Board of Education trustee area seven and I would love to have your vote and I would love to have your endorsement please thank you thank you that was helpful for me okay good Okay, good. and I thank you for the examples because a lot of us in this room have asked about oh yeah these things I can send these around because too. we don't see them yeah I guess I'll just send them both around <laughs> did anyone have any questions for me or um, anyone have questions so I do. Okay. Um, so the cur curriculum. So there's, do you have input to, or do you actually decide upon the curriculum that will be presented to the children at each, in each district? I'm wondering who has control over the curriculum. Is it local or is it at Kern County level? So as a teacher, our principal gave, assigned a group of teachers, uh, I'm talking about at the school level, to research different curriculum option, options and then present those to our principal and then the principal would present them to the district. And then the district would allow for uh, the publisher of those curriculum, curricula, I guess is the correct term, to be presented uh, as a whole to the district. Does that make sense? So it's suggested first from the teachers, approved by the principal, then it goes to the district, but they bring in the publisher so I, it's a great question because I sat in one of those meetings where the publisher was there and they had, which was odd to me, the district's attorney was standing with the publisher presenting the information and that was interesting. So, but everything that was presented sounded great, like, oh, we're gonna get to celebrate this and do this and this curriculum, I'm talking about the social studies curriculum. And uh, the board, every one of the board thought, that's, that's wonderful, let's celebrate, let's do this, this is perfect. And they just passed it right there in front of me. And there, weren't, there was not one parent sitting back there with me. Um, I was there with a friend of mine and a group that I'm involved in called Current Citizens for Freedom. And as a, as a regular citizen, because I don't have children in the school system now, I did, my children are adults now, but I wanted you guys to know, as parents and grandparents of children in the system, you have the highest power in front of that board, even higher than a teacher or even a principal. So if, if parents can come, which is what I'm gonna really push for, they need to stand up and say, wait a second, no, I don't want that. Or what does that mean? The meetings are in Bakersfield. Yeah. They're at the um, current superintendent of schools building on 17th Street. This is the other thing though, because I know a lot of people can't make it to Bakersfield yeah, on a Tuesday right. night. It starts at 6.30, it goes till like 9.30, yeah. so you guys can't, you know, that's too hard to make it. Well, they don't record the meetings and they should by law. So that's one of the first things I'm gonna do when I get in that seat, is demand that they record the meetings and then publish it. Mm -hmm. So they should also publish the notes from the meetings, which they don't have now either. I had to go through a bunch of hoops to get the notes from the last year, so. Um, it's they're doing this behind closed doors so as a group of seven you vote on what you're going to to do as a group so you could be outnumbered and how much how much pushback do you have from a state mandate that things happen okay good question so seven being the odd number so that we have right. we have a, a winning vote um, and as far as they would bring up let's vote let's for instance with the um, California Studies Weekly that's been proposed, then it would be voted upon by the seven members whether or not to pass that as a required curriculum used in the classroom. So um, obviously it's a majority vote. So right now there's one other person on the board who uh, believes along the same lines that I do. 
so we're the minority, but there's two others running to take two other seats, so that would equal four, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. would be great if we could get that in there. Um, but we can definitely stir up the water a little bit and make them think and say, you know, what about this and what about that and, and kind of stop, because right now I have the one that, that is voting against, but they kind of just ignore her because she's just the one. So they just kind of move on, you know, and they don't really stop. And But if there's enough of us on there to stop the meeting, to start asking questions, to create discussion, and or even pause, let's not vote yet. Well, I don't know enough about this. Let me give me another week to research this. So, and then you had another question yeah, after that. If does the state uh, have mandates that you can't override? That's what they claim. <laughs> but when you really listen to the mandates, I remember Gavin Newsom saying he was given, actually, it might have been from, it was, it was Newsom, who gave the districts the power to decide how they were going to roll it out. But if you were to go to the board now the way it is, they would say their hands are tied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's their that's their MO. That's and that's what I heard for the last year. So I asked the question. Can't, I can't do anything, but, I, but we can. We can if there's enough of us saying, no, we don't want this. So, yes. Uh, who takes the time, who actually would look at a, a textbook that are, of a curriculum that's being, I mean, you, you showed it right here. When you look on the surface, it looks like a great thing. But as you read through it line by line, you begin to see things that are inserted in there, which I call indoctrination. It's even occurring in math yes. textbooks. Even yes, math yes. textbooks will have it. Who actually has the time that can go through these things with a fine tooth comb to bring up these kind of questions and concerns? Who does that? Well, that's a good question. And, yeah. and honestly, when the publisher's there, the publisher knows. The publisher yeah. knows from beginning to end uh -huh what's in there, so it's about the questions. It's about the parents saying, because it would be on the agenda, okay, the publisher for California Studies Weekly will be there in two weeks, and I would let the parents know, hey, they're coming, they're gonna present this, and then the parents can go, is there anything in there about this or that or this or that? And they say, well, no, and you push, and you keep saying, no, I, I wanna know, what, what do you bring up? Lesbian, do you bring up uh, gender and, you know, furries or whatever they're called now because there's some crazy stuff coming on now so yes uh, i have a question about are is this board like governed by like the brown act you know with the, the having to be you know open to the public and things like that yes it is and and that's it's by law they should be right open yeah because i know so i'm on a commission i'm on the kern county animal services commission and okay so, you know again we have to follow the brown act we have to do ethics training definitely 100% obligated legally and that's where I'm gonna bring that up and I won't be quiet until they do because you don't know I'm coming to you because I know I'm in the classroom and I've seen it I've seen it come through and uh, it's not right that you don't know that it's happening I mean kids are are sometimes their parents will just say go do your homework and they're doing it they're seeing these words and they don't even parents don't even catch it because they they're good kids they do their homework they turn it in and so it's just that's where that so their their parents are way down on the feeding thing and by the time they see it it's like what are we gonna do and yeah it's like you know and it's you know i was born in san francisco in castro street okay yeah, yeah so i was exposed to all this stuff early on and i didn't actually get get a concept about it through friends and relatives and family until I was about 10 or so. And I think the second, third grade is a little young, but I think a, a person of reasonable thought, like I was, could kind of decipher through it, you know? But I was never taught from school. It was parents and relatives and friends. And um, I have a very strong opinion about it. And uh, I don't want my grandkids But at some point, they need to to understand because you can't live in this world anymore without having a basic understanding of it. And that develops through education. So where do you start? Not second grade. <laughs> yeah. Not second grade. It's a good question. Little minds yes. are being formed. 
Right. You know, and we're clueless at that point. Right. You know? But fifth grade, sixth grade, so you have to you have to be willing to negotiate too. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I'm just speaking out loud here. Yeah. Uh, no, I I appreciate that and I respect that. <clears throat> um, I look at it as really a lifestyle. I think people in that um, in that side of, of thinking with the LGBTQ right, mindset right. Uh, see right. it different than, than a lifestyle. That's where it's a little tricky. Right. Um, I kind of relate it to like my faith. I'm a Christian. Right. I pray. I believe in God. Right. And I read the Bible. I believe the Holy Word. But I don't expect that being taught in no. the classroom. That, well, that's I don't want go. it taught in the classroom because <laughs> I don't know who's teaching it. Yeah. Here you go, though. Christians have been hit continually about, about well, my generation, we no longer pray. And we no longer have the Bible in, in schools. And then we can't have a flag and we can't pray and we can't, we can't even say something to somebody else because inside the school district they might have a rule, you know. So how long, you know, sometimes it needs to, we need to equip, equip the kids to stand up in their faith at a young age. And I was... I did so so on it with my kids. They can stand up, but I wish I'd done better like most most parents do. It's yeah. tough. I raised my kids too and they were in the public school system. They were exposed to a lot more than I wanted them to be exposed to. One more to. thing, plant seed thought for you. Instead of having a recording so you can maybe see it later, maybe there's a local station that would be willing to record the stuff and people can see it live like they do here in town. Okay. Like a Zoom yes. type call? Yes, yeah, a Zoom okay. would be nice, and that's oh, something that you, should, you okay. should point out TV. to the rest of them is your area is huge. Yes, yes. And most of the people are not going to be able to go to those meetings. Yes, I agree. That's, that's a great how, point. That's how you could push back. Okay. Because it would be more ears potentially. Okay. Here on the set. It's crucial for your okay. Somebody say YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, like live. Or Facebook Live. Facebook Live. Facebook live. So okay. Yeah. Those are great ideas. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to try and... Uh, hand back okay, there. <laughs> one more question. Two, two pull. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, good. All right, I was just wondering about Title IX. I, I know it's going to be fine if, title, if it changes, Title IX to go through. I think there was a deadline. Did you make comments? Uh, good question. I don't have a solid answer on that one. Um, remind me Title IX. I should know this. Mm -hmm. What is Title IX again? Yes. So what they're what they're doing is they're taking oh right. the women oh yeah 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 okay and so you're asking how that's going to change things yeah they kind of change that they want to make on that or that it's going to override state okay so, um, I was just wondering if they do get it through why would this supposed to be effective on a January thirteenth twenty twenty three I'm not sure all I can say to you I know this for that as a parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, if, you're, if you have an, a, a place in, in a child's life that is going to the public school system, you have the power to put your foot down in front of that board and they have to listen to you. Even if Title IX passes, whatever, and they say their hands are tied, you keep pushing back. That's the best thing you can do. And the cool thing is when I'm on the board, I'm gonna listen to you because I know what it's like to talk to the board and they just ignored me. They just completely dismissed me as a teacher for 20 years and all of the things that I had done to, you know, work my way through the system to be a great educator, they dismissed me like, a, you know, threw me away like a piece of trash. So they don't listen to the teachers, they will listen to the parents, they have to. And I can listen to you and I can hear you and say, we have to stop and listen to this concerned parent. Something has to be done about this. We can't just ignore that. So. That's that's my job. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.